Good to see everybody tonight. Thank you for coming and being with us again this evening. I told you that we would have a Bible study each day here uh, this week between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Yesterday we looked at the cleansing of the temple, and tonight we're going to look at Matthew chapter 24. Uh, while you're turning there, and if you want to follow along with me in Matthew chapter 24, uh, I just want to say thank you for all the kind comments uh, we've gotten uh, concerning these videos. I've had a lot of fun doing them. Tonight's probably going to be a, a good bit shorter. Uh, today's been a full day uh, for me, and I'm sure it has been for you, too. Hope you're staying in. Hope that you are staying well. Uh, wear those masks. Keep your social distance. Don't go out unless you have to. But if you need anything that the church can help you with, please let us know. Of course, my number is 615-772-4920. I uh, hope that we hear some good news here in upcoming days about the, the decrease of the disease and the virus that's hit the country and hit the whole world. Uh, hopefully we can get this, the Lord can get this thing under control and we can get back together at church again. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a great day. We're going to love that, aren't we? Uh, Kimberly and I were talking the other day that you know, the Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation while he was in exile on the Isle of Patmos. Isle is a word meaning a island. Uh, isle is short for island. And I was thinking because he was in exile, he couldn't be with the church that he wanted to be with or the, the churches all across the empire. He had been exiled there. There were some mines there that they brought Christians to and made them work in the mines and all of that. And I got to thinking, you know, I feel like I'm kind of in exile too. I can't uh, be out there with you in Nolansville. I would love to be there and be out there with everyone, but I haven't been able to do that. But I have kind of felt exiled, but I'm not in exile on the Isle of Patmos, the island of Patmos. But I am in exile on an island of sorts. Every one of these Bible studies that uh, I have done, I've been sitting, I've been doing while I've been sitting at our kitchen island. And so that's where I'm sitting again tonight. I'm sitting at my kitchen island. I'll show it to you right here. If you want to see it there. There it is. I'm not a very good cameraman, but there is the kitchen island right there. And so I've, I've decided what I'm going to call this is, I'm going to call this messages from exile, not on the island of Patmos, but on the island of Kitchen. How about that? I'm in exile on Kitchen Island. And I'll just give you these Bible studies while we're doing that. If you like that, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, I'll stop doing it. Uh, but Matthew 24, let's take a moment to pray together tonight. Father, it's good to be together again today on this Tuesday as we're taking a look at things that happened between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, that week leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. Yesterday, Lord, we look at the cleansing of the temple. Tonight, we're going to look at uh, what Jesus uh, says about the signs of the end of time and the end of the world. And uh, guide us, Lord, as we look together at this tonight. Please be with all the folks there uh, with who attend and members of uh, involved in any way with First Baptist Church of Nolansville. We love him. We want him to be okay. Be with Ben Yates. Lord, please heal him. We want him to come through just fine. Please heal Claire uh, Warren as well, Lord, and uh, reach out to Miss Glenda Palmer there and give her comfort today as well. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Matthew 24 is an interesting passage of scripture. It does happen in that we have been talking about between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and they're talking about the end of the world. In fact, the disciples ask him in verse 3. Let me read there first. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they're asking about three things, the signs, uh, when will these things be? Jesus had just said in verses 1 and 2 that the temple was going to be torn down and the, the city of Jerusalem would be torn down, and that did happen in 70 AD when the Roman armies came back in and redefeated Judea and Jerusalem. They absolutely leveled the city. There was not one stone left 
upon another. A lot of other things, too, about how destructive that uh, invasion was. But they're asking him also about the signs of his coming, of the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. Well, here we are in very tense times in the world today. Lots of people have been asking me. I've been getting texts and emails and phone calls and people just stopping me as well. And, hey, what is all this about? What do you think this is? And everybody wants to know, is this a sign of the end of the world? Is, is Jesus coming soon? I want to say this to you very quickly and very clearly and directly. The coming of Jesus Christ can happen at any moment. Nothing else needs to happen. All the predictions, all the prophecies about things that would lead up to the uh, the coming of Christ have already been fulfilled. Nothing else has to happen for the coming of Christ to take place. That's why we need to reach this world for Christ and get, get people ready because uh, it could happen to any time, folks, especially with the very dire circumstances we're seeing in the world today. People need to get ready. Uh, stuff is going to happen, and it could be the, the coming of Christ to call us home. Uh, but certainly great trial and tribulation is going to come upon this world. So let's read what Jesus says. That's the question he's asked. What shall be the sign of thy coming in verse 4 and of the end of the world? And in verse 4, Jesus begins to answer that. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. What I'm going to look at tonight are some of the signs that Jesus gives about things we're going to see as we get closer and closer to the end. As I've read this for many, many years, I've thought about this passage of Scripture and other things as well. And there are two things. The Lord gives us two things to really focus on. One, one thing he wants us to understand is that there are some things we cannot help. There are some things we cannot do much about. And then on the other hand, there's a second group of things that we can do a lot about. And we can help. So I want to take a look at what we, there's not a whole lot of things that we, that we can't do a whole lot about. But then I want to take a look before we get away tonight at things we can do something about. Things that he mentions right here in Matthew 24. So verse 4, he says, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I want you to see that I'm reading scripture here. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, he says. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. I want to read a few more verses here. And then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Two more verses, or one more verse, very quickly. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. There's a lot more said in Matthew 24 about the end uh, that he, he's answering their question about. I'm just going to take a look down through verse 15 here tonight. Looking at things, number one, we cannot do a whole lot about. But then on the other hand, things we can do quite a bit about. Okay, let's take a look at these. Let's take a look at the ones we can't do a whole lot about first. Look at verse 5. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There's one thing that it's really not up to us. That's something that's going to happen. And along with that's what he says down in verse 11. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So as we get closer and closer to the end, there's going to be a, an uptick, uh, uh, an upgrade of intensity, I guess you could say, 
of the devil trying to deceive people by bringing false prophets into pulpits and into uh, of churches and into Sunday school classes and into places of power like political positions and offices and who knows what all else. False prophets will arise and they will preach their false doctrine according to verse 11. And then verse 5, there'll be even people come saying, I am Christ. I'm not just a, false, I'm not just a prophet. I'm Christ himself. And they're going to be false Christs. And both of these folks, the false prophets of verse 11 and the false Christs of verse 5, it says they will deceive many. Not a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, the false prophets will come. The false Christs will arise before the end of the world, before, the, before he calls us home there. We've seen this many, many times. There are people from time to time that rise up and say, hey, I am Christ who's come back to the world. My birth was the second coming. I've heard people say that. Uh, the old Reverend Sun Myung Moon uh, claims to be the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Uh, the people we call the Moonies are his disciples. Uh, just, just been, he's not the only one. There's been many, many that have come down through the years uh, but as we get closer and closer to the end, this is going to—it's uh, going to grow in number. It's going to grow in intensity. Uh, so we need to be careful about that. There's going to be a uh, an enlargement in number and intensity of false Christs and false prophets preaching their false doctrines. So be aware of that. Okay, so that's one thing. Verse six talks about some other things that we can't really control a lot. Not a whole lot we can do about it. But let's take a look at them. Verse 6 says, Jesus says, Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And so, boy, we, we hear about wars all the time, don't we? And rumors of wars, I can't tell you. The internet is filled with predictions and prophecies of, of upcoming wars that are going to happen. Some have taken place, many have not. Uh, so there are the actual wars that take place, Jesus says, and then there's the rumors of upcoming wars. He said that's going to build up, that's going to intensify as we get closer and closer to the end. I don't know that there's a whole lot we can do about that as Christians and as the church, but he wanted us to know and be ready for that. And then he says in verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Well, that happens a lot, doesn't it? That's even happening today. Nations rise up against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. They get into conflict. They have wars. They have spats. They have threats against each other. And uh, one country will do one thing. The other, another country will promise to retaliate if they don't back off. And uh, So it's just going to show as we get closer and closer to the end, People's patience is going to wear out. Their nerves are going to get raw. There's going to be lots of threats. Nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, Jesus says. Not a whole lot you and I can do about that. We don't run nations. We don't run kingdoms, but he wanted us to know about it. Verse 7, here are some other things that are going to happen that I'm not sure we can do a whole lot about, but want to know about them. Uh, he says, and there shall be famines. What is a famine? A famine is where there's no food. There's no food to eat. My goodness, I, I've, I've been to the grocery stores a few times like you have the last couple of months, and I've seen things I've never thought I would ever see in the United States. I've seen it in other countries, but I never thought I would see it here. The shelves be absolutely bare of essential food. Uh, just horrible to watch. No bread, no potatoes, no rice, no fruits, no vegetables, no meat. Uh, went somewhere just the other day, still no eggs, no milk. Just on and on it goes. Uh, famines, he says, will happen. And famines will intensify. And the number of them will intensify as we get closer and closer to the end. He said, there shall be famines and pestilences. Well, that's got our attention, doesn't it? The whole world is shut down because of a pestilence. Pestilence is an old word 
that means a disease, a plague, plague of disease that infects a whole nation or a whole region of the world or the whole world itself. Here we see a, a pestilence called the coronavirus, COVID-19, they call it. Uh, it's a pestilence. And Jesus said, you would hear about these things. You would be affected by these things as we get closer and closer to the end. And earthquakes, he says in verse 7 next, in divers places. I've been hearing about a lot about earthquakes lately. Not only in our nation, but all around the world, it seems like the earth is shaking. Remember what Jesus said when he rode into Jerusalem. The, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees stopped him and said, you need to stop all these people crying out for you. Glory, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Tell them to stop saying that about you. And Jesus, remember what he said. He said, if they were to stop, the very stones would cry out. Isn't that interesting? What that tells me is nature itself, even something as inanimate as the ground, the rock and the dirt and the ground, if we don't give glory to Jesus Christ, it will. Even the earth itself will. Well, as we get closer and closer to the end, all of nature including the ground itself underneath our feet, is going to start getting shook up. Things are going to get rough, folks. And then he says, but again, these are things, I'm not sure there's a whole lot we can do about them, but then he says in verse 8, all these are but the beginning of sorrows. That word sorrows means birth pangs. You ladies who have given birth, you know what that means, don't you? He says, these are just the beginning of the birth pangs pangs, the convulsions, or whatever you call those things, um, of giving birth. He's saying that's, that all these things that we're going through right now, it's just the beginning of what's about to happen. And then he says in verse 9, they're going to deliver you up to be afflicted. They're going to kill you. He's talking to Christians here. As we get closer and closer to the end, we're going to have to be ready for persecution we're going to have to be ready for people blaming us and telling us that we're the problem and trying to get rid of us. Many will be offended, he said in verse 10, will betray one another, shall hate one another. False prophets shall arise, shall deceive many. But he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So those are the things you can't, we can't do a whole lot about, but then there's some things we can do a lot about. I go back to verse 5. When he says false Christs are going to come, I can't do a whole lot about that. But then he says at the end of verse 5, I am Christ. But he, excuse me, verse 4, as he's introducing that, he says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Well, I can do something about that. There may be false Christs and false prophets coming to the world, but I don't have to listen to them. I can do something about whether I listen to them or not. Uh, I, I can make the decisions whether I'm going to follow their teaching or not. I may not be able to keep them from rising up on the world stage, but I can do something about making sure I don't believe what they're saying. So that's number one. Come on down here, come on down here, come on down here. Uh, look down at verse 12. He says, we get closer and closer to the end because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's just uh, that's Jesus showing he understands human nature. We've all seen it. As people delve into a life of more and more sin, their ability to really love the way God wants them to love just dissipates and dies and grows cold and just goes away. That's what sin does. As iniquity and sin grows and abounds, our ability to love grows cold and dies. So I can do something about that. I can make sure I don't commit iniquity. The rest of the world may, but I don't have to. And when I refuse to commit iniquity, I hang on to the ability to continue to love. To love God, to love my family, to love my church, to love the way he wants me to love. And he says in verse 13, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So we got to endure. Got to hang in there. Stay with Jesus. Don't give up. It's going to look like the devil's winning as we get closer and closer to the end because it's going to get rough. I'm telling you, it's going to get rough. 
But he says, you hang in there, you endure to the end, you will be saved. And then verse 14 is the last thing he says that I think we can do something about. To this gospel of the kingdom, good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ and his kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations as we get closer and closer to the end. The gospel is going to go everywhere into all the nations. He says, and then shall the end come. Well, there's a lot I can't do about the end of the world. But one thing I can do, I can preach the gospel. I can share the gospel. I can make sure the gospel gets out there into the world. I can support missionaries, our North American missionaries, through our Annie Armstrong Easter offering for North American missions, our Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions, our state missionaries here in the state of Tennessee, local mission efforts too. Why do we do all this? We do it for verse for verse 14, to get the gospel out to all the world before the end comes. So if you know somebody who's not a Christian, share the gospel with them. I would love to talk with them. If, if they want to make an appointment with me to talk with me, I'll be glad to do that. That's something I can do. There's a lot I can't do about the end of the world. But here's some things I can do. I can make sure that the false Christ and the false prophets and the false preachers and teachers don't deceive me. I'm going to stay with Jesus. I'm going to stay with the, with the Bible and what the Bible really teaches. I'm going, to, I'm going to not commit iniquity so that my ability to love will not grow cold. I'm going to make sure the gospel of the kingdom gets out to all the nations. That's what I can do. I know there are preachers who go into more detail about this, and that's fine. But for tonight, just a quick Bible study, I just share this with you. There's a lot I cannot explain about the end of the world. I know diff good Christians have differences of opinions about whether we're going to be raptured out before it really gets bad or we're going to have to stay here and go through it all. Uh, like there are good Christians on all sides of those arguments there. I would love for us to be raptured out before all the bad stuff really happens. But then I get to thinking, Things have really been bad for Christians down through the last 2,000 years. There have been time, certain times and certain places where Christians have been just mutilated and brutalized and put through awful tribulation. And the Lord did not rapture them out ahead of time. They had to go through it. I would love to see us get raptured out first, but whether we are or we are not raptured out first, there are some things we can do. Don't be deceived by the false teachers and the false preachers and the false Christ. Keep your life clean of iniquity so you can continue to love God and love Jesus Christ and get the gospel out before the end comes. I love you. Hope you have a great night tonight. Hope you have a great day tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we'll take a look at something else that happens in the week leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me lead with prayer and end with a prayer tonight. Lord, it's good to be together tonight. Thank you for the time we've had to look into God's word in Matthew 24. We know the end is coming. There are a lot of things like wars and rumors of wars and famines and pestilences and all these other things that we, we individually just don't have a whole lot that we can do about it except pray but there are some things we can do we can stay true to the bible stay true to good doctrine stay true to christ not be deceived by the false teachers and false christ we can keep our lives clean of iniquity so we can keep loving the way you want us to love and we can get the gospel out through supporting our missionaries and sharing the gospel ourselves with lost people in our own community Help us, Lord, to do what we can to get ready for the end. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. I'll leave this last thought with you. Whether we go through it or we don't, we get to be with Jesus. Isn't that great? When it's all over, we get to be with Jesus forevermore. So here I am. That's sign out. Signing out, Brother Mike from Exile from the island of Kitchen in West Nashville. God bless you. I love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow.